would you agree that the narrative being peddled right now that says that an insane amount of fentanyl is being brought into this country by illegal immigrants? Freshman Democratic Representative Maxwell Frost did an excellent job breaking through some of the myths we've heard from the right wing when it comes to President Joe Biden's policies at our nation's southern border. Now, the answer from the Border Patrol agents is fascinating to say the least. But before we get to that, I just want to say it is shocking that no other Democrat was as effective and concise in asking the kinds of questions that Representative Frost did in the context of this immigration related hearing on the House floor. With that said, here's how the Border Patrol agents responded. An insane amount of fentanyl is being brought into this country by illegal immigrants, specifically. Would you say that is true? Sir, again, we're here to report on the facts on, on border security. I, I probably differ from giving an opinion on anything in the news right With now. the data, right? Because that, that's probably doubtful. I, I can't yeah. provide no, all good. a factual Thank you, statement. No, I, I appreciate it. I agree, right? It has to be rooted in the data. You know, a Cato Institute report and CBP data shows that more than 85% of the illicit fentanyl entering the United States is brought in by citizens of the United States of America. So, Mr. Chairman, I request unanimous consent to enter into the record the 2022 Cato Institute report demonstrating that illicit fentanyl is primarily trafficked by U.S. citizens at lawful ports of entry. So that was one myth that was debunked by Representative Frost and by Border Patrol agents who were part of this hearing. But that's not the best part in my opinion. There was another question that he asked, which we're gonna get to in just a moment. Before we do, Cenk, why don't you jump in? It, look, the guy's 26 years old and I think that's a giant advantage. Uh, and that's because he can Google things uh, and he's not ancient and he has energy and he's a progressive. He's not dead inside. Right, yet. yeah, <laughs> and he he and he can make simple points, which honestly a giant number of Democrats can't even make the simplest point. They keep just letting the Republicans say that oh, the illegal immigrants are bringing in the fentanyl. Well, it's just not true. Why don't you just tell them the fact? And he did, but wasn't that easy? And you know what Republicans had to say about that? Nothing, because they're lying. And when he gives you the data, they run away. It's not that hard. Wait till you see the second one. And by the way, just let me comment on, on the myth itself, because it shows the lack of seriousness coming from the Republican Party in regard to this very real crisis we're dealing with in this country right now with fentanyl overdoses, okay? Almost 100,000 people died of drug overdoses last year alone. And the majority of those overdoses were caused by synthetic opioids like fentanyl, okay? If you politicize it and just turn it into an anti-immigration issue, well then you're not actually genuinely concerned about finding solutions to this very real problem. Now with that said, this was my favorite part of Frost's line of questioning, let's watch. For many folks around the country who might only watch far right media or just listen to even some of the folks on this committee, I'm curious, Chief Chavez, when President Biden took office, did your agent stop enforcing the border and just allow everybody to come in, thus creating what we hear here is is an open border? Did that happen when the president took office? Sir, thank you for your question. Uh, the answer is no, sir. Okay, we thank you. We continue to enforce policy and laws. Thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, Chief Modlin, when President Biden took office, did the border just open and did y'all stop enforcing your policies? Also, thank you for your question, sir. I, I can tell you this, the fifth administration I've worked for, starting with the Clinton administration and border patrol agents do their job every day. Thank you, I appreciate it. Look, I mean, look. As y'all probably realize by now, a lot of these hearings are not really about solutions, they're about politics. And for me, I believe solutions must be rooted in facts. I loved that last statement. It's not rooted in, in facts, it's not rooted in, in policy solutions, it's just politics. And it's so important to drive that point home because the reason why we don't have solutions to uh, the immigration issue is because Congress hasn't passed legislation to address it. So it's real easy for Republicans to complain about what's happening on the southern border, but are they working on legislation to do anything about it? Is there any reform that they're willing to work on? No, they just wanna politicize it for their own personal electoral gain. So I, I, I wanna suggest what they can do in a second. But first, the most important thing here is, look, look at how simple that was, guys. 
We've been waiting like 20, 40 years for a Democrat to make the most obvious points in the world. Guys, hey, Custom uh, Border Patrol, is the border actually open? No. It's just a total myth that they made up. How easy was that? That was so easy. We totally, uh, and we say it on the Young Turks all the time. We give constructive solutions and we say, hey, why don't the Democrats say that there is no open border? That of course the law is still in effect and that every Republican that says open border is a liar. Why don't they just say these obvious things? And then uh, like reporters and pundits will be like, no, the sophisticated thing to do is to not fight back. That's fourth dimensional chess. You just like lie down and let them run over you and that's super sophisticated. No, it's not sophisticated. You're supposed to actually say the truth. Ask them obvious, easy questions. So great job by Maxwell Frost. Please elect younger people. Like the older generation of Democrats don't know how to fight, don't want to fight, love Republicans, don't like their base. Get them out of the goddamn way. Get some new blood in there, make sure they're progressive. And look at the difference that that makes. Look, I don't know how much age really makes a difference, okay? Like, let's not be unfair to some of the great moments that older Democrats had during similar hearings. Maybe not on immigration, but with members of the financial sector. Katie Porter does a great job in fighting back. Katie Porter's like 40 years younger than the average Democrat. Okay, but I, yeah, that, okay, that's fair if you're gonna put it in that context, but she's not considered a spring chicken. You, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, he's 26, that's yeah. incredibly young, I get it, right? And she's a normal mom, right? Um, but, but number one, she's definitely on the younger side. But guys, I mentioned age because I, I mainly I think of like Diane Feinstein and Steny Hoyer and Schumer and Pelosi. No, they need to, they need to step aside. Yeah, and yeah like, I totally they, agree with you. I mean, they, they don't know. I, they don't know, again, they don't know how to fight. And most importantly, they don't want to fight. Even Bernie doesn't want to fight. I love Bernie, but God, he he would rather hide in shame than fight a corporate Democrat. He'll say general broad points, but he won't actually name names. To be fair, Maxwell Frost hasn't named names either on the corporate Democratic side. I'm sure that he's been told by everyone in the, in Washington, you better not do that, that is very rude, that can get things done. We do not want actual change. But so far, fantastic for Maxwell Frost. And guys, what do you wanna do about immigration? Well, why don't they debate it for once? Like many years ago, they tried, now like probably over a decade ago. It was in 2014. Yeah, mm -hmm. about a decade ago, where they got together in a back room and tried to negotiate a deal between Lindsey Graham and some Democrats, etc. And they came up with this awful proposal where it was 14 years as a pathway to citizenship. That's twice what indentured servants used to serve, right? It was a horrible bill and even that didn't pass. So take it out in public. Democrats make your points. Republicans say, "Oh, we hate immigrants and we don't want any of them, of them to ever come in this country and then debate it, right? No, nope, no, nope, we're never gonna have that. Instead, we're gonna have nonsense politics that have nothing to do with policy filled with nothing but lies. Now, uh, I had forgotten that Paul Gosar still exists, and unfortunately he does in the context of Congress. And uh, I just wanna show you his part of this hearing so you can juxtapose it with what uh, we saw from Representative Frost. Pay particular attention to the woman and her facial expressions, the woman behind Gosar as he goes on his uh, weirdo unhinged rant. Why oh, would Biden do this, to create chaos? To sow so discord, What's, what is the answer to this mess for Biden and the Democrats? More big brother, more control, even changing our culture? I don't know who that woman is, but she's all of us at this moment. <laughs> <laughs> like, anyway, uh, change our culture. We know what he's referring to there, right? It's more of the white replacement theory, gobbledygook, and it's, conspiratorial, ridiculous, and really offers no solutions to the border crisis that they love to fearmonger about so much. So, okay, so look, the, he's alluding to the white uh, great replacement theory, et cetera. It's not just, and by the way, Maxwell for us called that out too. So, just A plus uh, on that. But Paul Gosar, are we pretending he's not mentally ill? Like, if you put it in a movie of a guy going, <laughs> and they're trying to replace their culture. I would say that's over the top. Hey, hey, Oliver Stone, bring it down, right? I mean, like the only thing that was missing was, uh -huh, right? Like, no, no, the guy's mentally ill. There's no question about it. None. 
I'm not a trained therapist. I can tell you that guy has massive mental problems. He belongs in a clinic way more than in a Congress. And we all have to treat him like we have to have a debate. Oh, are we, are we, is Mexico trying to replace white people in cahoots with Joe Biden? Let's have a debate with the guy going, I think they are. I think they are. Okay, well, Republicans, so proud. You must be so proud of your representative. Thanks for watching The Young Turks. Really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.